You're listening to Rangoli Radio on DAB in Leeds area and on rangoliradio.com all over the world. interview on Radio Rangoli with me, Divya Kiran and my co-interviewer Pratibha Ramachandra. Today, our guest is Apoorva Bibi, an award-winning beekeeper who is here with us today to discuss the importance of conserving the environment and the important role bees play in doing so. This interview is being broadcast today on the occasion of World Environment Day to spread awareness on the significance of conserving the environment which is so important uh, in inspiring positive change bringing together millions of people and encouraging them to protect and preserve our envi- environment for the future generations isn't it divya yes it is so today we have with us apurva welcome to the show apurva and please do tell us something about yourself what do you do your journey with beekeeping and how this journey started uh, thank you divya uh, so it's been 14 years uh, since i have been into beekeeping so i started uh, beekeeping as a hobby and now i'm maintaining 500 bee colonies with my team and uh, i have my own carpentry i have my own honey packaging unit and also i train uh, uh, more than 2000 individuals in a year so it's been a wonderful experience and journey so far excellent 14 years is not a small time you must have really enjoyed this 14 years that's the reason it has gone so long we wish you more of these years and today it is it is time that we talk more about your journey and your thoughts about how bees are important to the environment definitely welcome to the show apurva it's really uh, nice talking to you about the bees on the occasion of world environment day because uh, i'm sure you'll be able to tell us about uh, the role the bees play uh, in the environment so i just wanted to know was it was this an accidental discovery or that you uh, got into beekeeping or did you study uh, to get into it so how did you learn about it and how did you set up and uh, where you where are your stands or hives uh, could you tell us more about that yeah sure pratibha so i i was uh, pursuing my engineering uh, in my third year mechanical engineering at chitradurga so i met a person he is my guru mr shant viraya uh, from uh, hiriur chitradurga so he came to my my home because uh, the, we we had a program called uh, kannada sahitya sammelana where my father was a uh, uh, president at uh, book book publication committee so he wanted to republish his book he came to my home he he had written a book about uh, beekeeping so 
you know since my childhood i was always interested in all insects birds and animals and uh, when he came i i just uh, you know talked to him and and asked few questions so that was so uh, you know uh, really interesting so i told him that i will visit his place and then i went to the training program uh, the exposure training program in beekeeping it was a introductory training program then uh, it opened up my eyes and uh, what i really want to become when i was in my third year engineer <laughs> so that was interesting so then i started as a hobby by uh, you know buying two beehive boxes and i kept it at my home one was at my you know near to my bedroom i opened my windows and kept beehive inside my bedroom wow so, <laughs> so the bees were going away from the windows and coming back so every morning i used to go and open the beehive and looking into the bees every morning they used to leave beehive at approximately 5:45 am so i used to wake up and just want to hear the buzz when they leave the hive for for first foraging so those things were really interesting and uh, you know first i went to the field with my guru so he took he took me uh, wherever he went with farmers so he took me uh, along with him and then i started to look into agriculture and agricultural ecosystem so then uh, i started to refer uh, the books and internet and everything so the first exposure was completely practical so it's like completely i have spent about 2 years only on field uh, for learning and then uh, practicing and then everything it went uh, really well and uh, i must say that uh, that conviction of whatever i can understand about bees uh, it is growing and uh, learning is continuous and we are learning a lot i'm still learning that i can say yeah that was very insightful apurva uh, well when to whatever job that we do or whatever task we take up there is a harder part of it and there is also a part that is also fulfilling so would you be able to tell us what is the hardest part of beekeeping or what challenges do you face as a beekeeper and according to you what is the most fulfilling part as a beekeeper yeah well, definitely you know when uh, when this question is being asked by the people uh, the background uh, uh, question will be like uh, are you afraid of stings or are you worried about stings something exactly. like that yeah i know <laughs> uh, but stinging is not a matter of uh, you know any worry about for for a beekeeper because there is a saying uh, it says uh, if you are a carpenter you will hit your thumb and if you are a beekeeper you will get stung <laughs> so so it is a it is an occupational hazard but we we don't uh, we don't talk about it also when beekeepers meet we don't talk about stinging or anything we talk about the hardship of uh, maintaining the hive uh, within the variability of climate change mm. maintaining the hive hives with uh, all the pesticide is being sprayed everywhere and migrations because mm. when we when we uh, manage so many apiaries bee farms we will have to keep them in a, a good foliage and forage uh, patches of flowers and and crops and fields even the forests so taking them in a truck uh, loading them in in a truck during the evening and reaching there before sun sun rises uh, and we will have to drive very carefully uh, and road conditions are not in our hands and we will have to reach there before uh, 4:30 in the morning and unload all the boxes and uh, we will have to place all the hives wherever we have uh, planned so these are little challenging uh, 
in a process the main pro- main challenge whatever beekeepers are facing right now after we do all the hard work and everything and uh, bees will be working really uh, really well and uh, will be happy when when we go for a very good foraging grounds but when we harvest honey then we will have to face the market and uh, as you know in the market uh, the adulteration and all those things are there adulteration is everywhere in the food it is there in honey also okay so our honey which is harvested with all the hard work of us and bees and everything and we will have to compete with the honey which is adulterated so that is the hardest part whatever we are facing right now along with climate change pesticides mm. and uh, the process of migration okay thank you so much for that uh, Pr- apurva and pratibha i think we'll take a small break here and we'll play one of apurva's favorite song uh, apurva which is your favorite song now more jana kannada dor agirodrinda kannada le keltini apurva are nimma favorite haadi yavudu um ittichige vanadevi preetiya vandane anta ondu haadu bandittu that was uh, that was for uh, world environment day last year ಹೌದು ವಿಜಯ್ ಪ್ರಕಾಶ್ ಅವರು ಹಾಡಿರೋದಲ್ವಾ ಎಸ್ ವಿ ಕೆ ಅದನ್ನ ಪ್ಲೇ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಸಂತೋಷ ನಿಮ್ಗೋಸ್ಕರ ಈ ಹಾಡು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರೀತಿಯ ವಂದನೆ ಹೇಗಂತ ಮಾಡಲಿ ವರ್ಣನೆ ಮನಸೂರೆ ಮಾಡಬಲ್ಲ ಸ್ವರ್ಗಾನೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿದೆ ಕಂಗಾಳಿ ಅದೆಯನು ತುಂಬಿದೆ ಮುದ್ದಾಗಿ ಹಸಿರು ಹದ್ದು ಭೂಮಿನೆ ನಗುತ್ತಿದೆ ನಂಬರು ಸ್ಮಯ ನಿನ್ನದ ವನದೇವಿ ಪ್ರೀತಿಯ ವಂದನೆ ಹೇಗಂತ ಮಾಡಲಿ ವರ್ಣನೆ ಸೆಹತಿಯಾಗಿ ಬಂದು ನೀಲಿ ಬಾರಲಿ ಮೂಡಿದೆ ಕೆಂಪು ಸೂರ್ಯನ ಹೊಂಗಿರಣ ಕೂಡ ಧರೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಮೊದಲು ನಿನ್ನ ಸ್ಪರ್ಶವ ಮಾಡಿದೆ ಮಯೂರಿ ಸಿರಿ ನತ್ತರ ಇಲ್ಲಿದೆ ಕೈ ಚಾಚಿ ಗಿರಿ ಮುಗಿಲನು ತಾಕಿದೆ
ನಕ್ಕು ನಗಿಸುತ್ತಾ ಇರುವಷ್ಟು ಕಾಲ ಖುಷಿಯಾಗಿ ಬಾಳಿ ಎಂದು ಹೂವಿದು ಹೇಳಿದೆ ದಾಹಾನಿಗಲು ಮುಡಿಪಿಟ್ಟು ತನ್ನ ಬದುಕನ್ನು ನದಿಯು ಎಂಥ ತ್ಯಾಗವ ಮಾಡಿದೆ ಶ್ರೀಗಂಧ ಸದಾ ಕಂಪು ಚಲ್ಲ that was a beautiful uh, song choice apurva uh, re thank you uh moving on um i wanted to know where your setup is and uh, uh how many hives you have and more about that yeah um so i i am actually following the migratory beekeeping uh, pattern hmm. uh, the practice so my hives are uh, few hives are at cork right now in the western ghats so the monsoon is yet to come uh, so i'm i will be bringing back to the periphery of bangalore the outskirts of bangalore where i keep them at uh, near my factory where the kadapagere which is at magadi road and uh, it is up to king uh, some part of kingeri and some part of uh, ramnagara district in uh, nearby kanakpura so there are so many places where we keep the bees because we cannot overcrowd uh, the number of colonies in a same place i see so it is like a you know there there are no references or literature available anywhere but for a beekeeper we know that how many bee colonies can sustain in a place uh which which is according to the vegetation uh, foliage water uh, the shade everything so everything counts so we we keep 20 to 25 bo- uh, beehives in a particular place and we keep multiplying the places according to whatever colonies we we will have to maintain in the, in the off season so in the honey flow season we will take them back to wherever the flora is on uh, the the blossom is on we will take them back and we will place there and then we will harvest honey so this is how it goes sometimes uh, the blossom to blossom you know there will be blossom of uh, sunflower and after that there will be blossom of uh, sesame there will be blossom of niger mustard eucalyptus so it will be like you know continuous migrations sometimes but sometimes there will be only two to three migrations so this goes like this and uh, training will be in our own uh, farms bee farms uh, one of the bee farm we will finalize where the participants can come uh, the participants participants come uh, from so many diverse backgrounds sometimes students sometimes uh, farmers sometimes artists sometimes you know naturalists uh, so they come to the farm and they will spend the whole day and then we will uh, follow up with them with uh, farming our own groups in social media and many other channels so apart from beekeeping you also train people actively um, to uh, about beekeeping and uh, how to do that that's really yeah. uh, interesting uh also have you noticed any changes in the bees behaviors or population due to the climate change and other environmental factors definitely you know climate change for beekeeping you know the blossom which is supposed to have at a, at a particular time if uh, if it uh, if it is not happening at a particular time then the size of the colonies uh, will uh, will will not become bigger and only when the size of colony uh, the population of bees increases then only they can split no in natu- i'm talking about wild bees not right. uh, i'm not just talking about my apiary business mm-hmm. so in a, in a nature the colonies will have to get proper food in a particular time so that they can become big colonies and then they can split the new queen will come and uh, you know there will be split of colony so that is how they exist in our ecosystem so if the blossom delays 
of uh, in a particular time because of the climate change then there will be less pollinators in several uh, ecosystems because of that uh, we will have lesser food we will have lesser pollination in the wildlife in the in the forests also because of that wildlife will also will not get proper food so rejuvenation rejuvenation of forest everything will be uh, at stake if pollination uh, uh, deficit happens in any ecosystem so that is a main problem with climate change Mm, that sounds interesting because I was just when you were talking constantly you were talking about the food chain and the importance. If you don't mind, can you please tell us the importance of bees and how important is it that they pollinate the plants and why is it so important? It's it's very important because uh, you know as per the new study, uh, the developing countries they uh, they are producing more food right now. Um, so. Uh, if you remember uh, in india i am talking about india we were uh, we were consuming only seasonal fruits before 25 20 25 years now we are getting all season fruits right exactly. so we are getting uh, many fruits in all seasons so that means the pollination requirement is more right because we need to get all the fruits and the farmers are dependent on on the income of uh, agriculture and the production is required so everything requires uh, animal or insect pollination and bees are playing bigger roles because the bees are social insects so other insects may be if they, if their uh, you know tummy is full they they may not work more but social insects will have to work more because they will have to develop the colony split the colony and uh, store honey for the upcoming dark period so everything will be there so that's why uh, the pollination and the food security is interrelated and uh, most of the nutritional fruits and nutritional food whatever we have to eat uh, th- this comes from pollination at the right time that's called efficient pollination so you know, when the flower is open and ready for pollination if the pollinator is there in the in that particular premises then only uh, the the production will be uh, precise otherwise the production will be very very weak okay. so that's why the, poly, the plant reproduction mm-hmm. uh, we we miss out on plant reproduction uh, when we educate farmers when we educate people so only when uh, the plant reproduction happens with insect pollination mm-hmm. then only everything goes well with food and also with forests everything goes well otherwise we will we will be losing so many things thank you so much uh, apurva really it is so educating you know they are talking to you is like uh, actually entering into a new world uh, which is uh, which i'm not exposed to bees all always when i see a bee you know all the first thing is get scared away from the bee because it will sting me but today we are you're opening uh, thoroughly into a new world thank you so much we'll continue our conversation uh, i think it's time for us to listen to another song why don't you tell, uh, choose another song for us for you to play Uh, sure uh, so you know we we need to talk about uh, uh, the pollution which happens in uh, agricultural field true 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 uh, because of the pesticides mm. and because of that 40% of uh, all insects uh, from from the surface of earth is going to extinct mm. because of pesticides and uh, uh, marty bole which is a nice song uh uh you know so i would like to uh, you know hear about it oh we would we would really love to play that song thank you so much for your request and the song is for you apurva hole hole dheeme dheeme mitti bole maati bole hole hole dheeme dheeme mitti bole maati bole
बोल शोले हाले हाले धीमे धीमे मिट्टी बोले माटी बोले घर के आंगन में कहा से ये लपट सी आ गई खिड़कियों की बोले माटी बोले कर्म है माथा सागर का तबीयत ढीली ढीली देखो झलकती आस माँ की आंख नीली नीली ओ किसने पानी को जलाया किसने बोले माटी बोले गीत बोने थे तुम्हें गीत बोने थे तुम्हें बो दिए क्यों लाल शोले हाले हाले धीमे धीमे मिट्टी बोले माटी बोले listening to Rangoli Radio over DAB in the Leeds area and on rangoliradio.com everywhere in the world. After that uh, lovely song, um, Apurva Aure, uh, I would like to know uh, about uh, the association you have of the beekeepers uh, and uh, the role um, you play in that and uh, the work um, you do through that association, please. Yeah, uh, so we have a non-governmental organization, which is a non-profit organization. It's called the Hive Trust. Okay. So we we are a we are few people uh, working for uh, one is about education about uh, bees and small pollinators, and another is for uh, advocacy about uh, conserving bees in urban space, because in Bangalore and other metro cities. When when the bee colonies come to their uh, balconies, uh, people call pest control companies and they will kill them. Oh. So that is the only immediate solution where people are finding it. And uh, for those people, we talk to them, we explain about bees, their social behavior, and how dangerous they are not. So uh, we educate it. We you know. If we wait for just three months, seventy percent of the colonies can be saved in Bangalore. So just that, you know, nature is requires some patience Absolutely. for coexist for coexistence. So you know, many times when people ask me what, how do we conserve in a holistic way, we just have to step back and uh, see how nature is so resilient. So in the, in a bees uh, bee human conflict, the term is bee human conflict in urban area. So we are uh, educating people. We are educating children. Children are uh, coming to our farms where they are getting experience. We are giving them experience session where they can handle the bees uh, so closely. And uh, we are going to schools. We are going to uh, you know factories. We are going to Uh, IT campuses, educating uh, education is very much important about uh, how uh, they they are required and vital uh, to our existence. Uh, so education uh, with respect to farmers, uh, we are giving beekeeping training uh, and uh, for the tribal farmers also, tribal individuals also, we are giving training and uh, we are we are organizing. Uh, the sector by farming farmer producer organizations mm, that's so, brilliant yeah 
and in some places like chatisgarh we have worked with uh, tribal people and we are uh, we we have formed a cooperative society over there for beekeepers where they are uh, doing beekeeping collecting honey and uh, have their own brand we don't uh, you know, we don't buy back everything and do such things you know we we, we would like to have them a brand of their own so they have their own brand right now so these are all the things we are doing from the health list that's very noble actually that's really good um, apurva i was like just thinking you know it, um, where, when we go out in the garden in uk these days sometimes the most of the time it is cold but you know during summer we see a dead bee or you know uh, you know we we fi- i really feel bad about it is there any way that you know a normal person like me like you know how we can take care of bees or how we can uh, uh, encourage bees to come to visit our uh, garden yeah you know the the question in india is really different you now we you know in other countries i can see that they are growing uh, the the forage plants for bees wherever is possible they are growing forage plants for bees mm. but here in india we would we would like to address uh, the killing first uh, because uh, we are one of the most unfortunate country where we, we are killing our own bees they are like our national assets mm. uh, because they they are required for pollination of but uh, uh, because of lack of awareness mm. and uh, uh, you know less education and, and the fear factor the fear, fear dominates plays a very important role yes yeah. it dominates everything you know i have come across so many Uh, situations where uh, a mother will be so worried about uh, you know child. their their child um the son is so worried about their uh, grand you know uh, parents and grandparents who are recuperating from surgery uh, the beehive is so nearby so there are so many situations where they they would like to have immediate solution so even then also i try to make them calm and uh, listen to uh, the bee sensitization talk so you know more you learn about bees more you explore about their life uh, their uh, is so ph- philosophical and poetic how they live and how they die how they sacrifice themselves for for their colony so if we talk more about it and spread more awareness uh if you know then you can talk to you, talk to the person who who is in this be human conflict then you can solve the problem that is uh, spreading awareness and education is the only way uh, to save the bees exactly i think you know i should um, put back my fear and start more interacting with the nature do yeah. i like i do i do like working in the garden but the only thing the fear factor is the sting Yeah. <laughs> I think that should that should overpower me now. Yeah. Thank you so much for this Apurva. Uh I think it's time that we ask you to uh, choose another song to play for you. Uh is there any particular song that you want us to play? Yeah. Uh so you hi chala Oh from, from movie Swadesh. Yeah. Yes, yes. So. And we lovely. Yes, yes. We are we are very happy to play this song for you. It is for you Apurva.
कहा अब मुझसे मिलने को है कोई कहीं अब तुझसे ये रास्ता है कह रहा अब मुझसे मिलने को है कोई कहीं अब तुझसे दिल को है क्यों ये बेताबी किससे मुलाकात होनी है जिसका कब से अरमा था शायद वही बात होनी है यूं ही चला चल रहा ही यूं ही चला चल रहा ही जीवन गाड़ी है समय पैया आंसू की नदियां भी हैं खुशियों की बगियां भी हैं रास्ता सब तेरा तक है भैया यूं ही चला चल रहा ही यूं ही चला चल रहा ही कितनी हसीन है ये दुनिया फूल सारे झमेले देख फूलों के मेले बड़ी रंगीन है ये दुनिया का गांव है बादल ये कैसा छाया दिल ये कहा ले आया सपना ये क्या दिखलाया है मुझको हर सपना सच लगे जो प्रेम मगन जले जो राह तू चले अपने मन की हर पल की सीप से मोती ही तू चुने जो तू सदा सुने अपने चला चल रहा ही यूं ही चला चल रहा ही कितनी हसीन है ये दुनिया फूल सारे झमेले देख फूलों के मेले बड़ी रंगीन है ये दुनिया You're listening to Rangoli Radio on DAB in Leeds area and on rangoliradio.com all over the world. That's one of the most popular songs uh, I remember on our Aap Ki Pasand as well. And it's such a refreshing song always. Um, so, Apurva, um, um, how do you contribute to the conservation uh, of the bees? Uh, do you work with the local government to spread the awareness or uh, anything? Yeah. Um, actually, I have worked with um, many government departments and missionaries uh, which, are, which have taken beekeeping and bee pollination as an input for agriculture. So, Khadi and Village Industries Commission, they have taken up beekeeping in a very big scale. So for, for this, uh, I have been a professional training associate uh, for providing training. I can organize training on my own on behalf of Khadi and Village Industries Commission. And it will be certified by Khadi. And uh, I am an empanel supplier for uh, 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 Government of Karnataka through Horticulture Department. And I have worked with the forest department. I have worked with uh, National Dairy Development Board. And I have worked with NABARD. And I have been a consultant for uh, many agricultural universities to implement uh, uh, capacity building programs for beekeeping. Uh, whatever is possible uh, to reach uh, beekeeping to people, uh, I have tried my best, level best to uh, do it. And, and through this, uh, we, we get into many discussions uh, about ground realities and uh, conservation part as well. So I have been talking to, uh, even I, I have given a lot of input to uh, environmental management and uh, planning research institute in Bangalore. So to tackle this situation of bee killing 
and and uh, you know list out all the pesticides which are uh, fatal for the bees which yeah. are used in agriculture we cannot enforce uh, anything right away in, in india because the indian texture and the construct is so different we cannot do everything suddenly when it comes to plastic also when it comes to anything uh, we cannot do immediate enforcement but we will have to educate and we will have to uh, bring awareness and unfortunately many times uh, the environmental issues are not so emotional when uh, when when something is emotional humans will connect and they will participate in it but uh, environmental issues are uh, uh, really you know neglected yeah neglected and so important but we we fail in addressing it and we fail in connecting to it and uh, you know with uh, with families you know we it starts with families you know i will be so motivated to conserve and do something but uh, in your own family there will be people who will not be so motivated to do it and they will look for some shortcuts and everything uh, you know we should feel some you know uncomfortable thing about it so i i discuss this uh, and i bring all these concepts to uh, the bureaucrats uh, and i try to uh, bring in all the points whatever and how is, is their uh, response to this uh, is the government funding for any of this uh well the funding is uh, happening only for uh, the farmers perspective mm. but not happening with respect to the conservation perspective mm. uh, yeah the farmers farmers will get uh, all the input about beekeeping and everything but when it comes to conservation point where mm. bees will require a pristine environment to survive and uh, sustain and multiply breed and everything uh, those things are not happening very well but we are uh, we are in now whenever we we meet i talk about this about the pesticides about the loss of habitat about everything so there is a lot of awareness which is bringing and beekeeping will sensitize farmers as well because when they have to sustain these insects in their farm ecosystem then they will have to think of uh, alternatives like organic farming natural farming and uh, all the solutions which will be away from using chemicals so these things are coming up and uh, i think uh, more education more awareness which is required even yeah. for the even for the bureaucrats also. yeah yeah absolutely it should start from there yeah. okay Uh, you're listening to Rangoli Radio with me, Divya Kiran and Pratibha, uh, with our special guest Apurva in honor of World Environment Day on 5th of June. Uh, Apurva is saying that, you know, I was just wanting to ask you this. Uh, yeah, education and the Hildaga, you were telling, you know, education should start with the family of uh, how it is. I have seen on your Instagram and other social media, I think your little... child who is about 5 years he plays with bees he plays with bees so why don't you tell us that you know as mothers that as you said as mothers as grandparents we are all very uh, we have our inhibitions to send our children closer to nature though we want them to you know be a part of the nature but we are hesitant as you know it is nice to listen more about this uh, from you yeah definitely you know my son is 4 uh, and 1/2 now and um, you know when he when he watches me uh, doing all those things and he feels that it is completely okay and safe to do it uh, so there is no fear so you you should take away fear from that when when we are dealing with any kind of insects because they will not sting just like that they will not bite you just like that they will uh, you know they will bite you or sting you whenever they are threatened that's it okay 
how how do we know that they will not feel threatened how is that you know we, we see solitary bees most of the times we see solitary bees how do we feel that you know they, they are not under threat see uh, you know even solitary bees will build uh, the temporary nest for uh, making their eggs and cocoon if yeah. you put your finger into that then uh, you get stung uh, when we go to the beehive uh, the, the social insects when we are so near to the beehive and uh, moving very fast then only they will sting otherwise they don't sting normal uh, normal bees that are you know buzzing around in the gardens when they when no. they think that you know we run away there is no need for us to run it, away there is no need to panic even if they you know sometimes bees will require uh, minerals and salts um and if they they usually get it from water but if they don't get it from water they sometimes they will sit on your uh, forehead um for your sweat mm-hmm. so you don't you don't have to you know sweat them and uh, if you do that then you will get stung okay so okay. don't do anything so okay. they let if them go harm yeah. them then they'll harm you yeah it's so yeah. many interesting facts that we didn't know about bees exactly <laughs> it is really interesting okay yeah. let's continue our uh, discussion uh, with you uh, i think you know the more we talk i think we are getting uh, intruded to more to know more but i think uh, as we all know that the clock always says but i would like to um um ask if you have any message for the young generation uh, uh, about uh, this and uh, to also for the conservation of our environment yeah uh, see you know many of us uh, i can see that many people wa- would like to participate in the conservation and they don't know how to start and they don't know how we can do that uh, and getting that into the practice um as i told you it starts with your family and keep doing that about throwing the plastic away and uh, if you see someone throwing plastic away and not doing the waste segregation so it suddenly we we take up everything personally and we getting into you know fight or that will not solve the problem so when we do our own responsibilities uh, effectively uh, indiv- as an individual that will also contribute a lot and it will influence others when you do that uh, and you getting that into practice it will influence others so uh, you know you study you know the plastic is something which is really worrisome even for the bees also latest studies showing microplastics everywhere and it may get into honey and it may get into the bees uh, gut, guts also okay. so there will be a problem so you know in uh, in urban space uh, you can see lot of tea shops you know uh, they throw it away and the bees will be there also because there will be sugar uh. so you know they they get lot of uh, plastics in, into that so that's why you know the, when we, we we cannot enforce anything but still Uh, we will have to perform our own responsibilities by uh, not buying the plastic or avoiding the plastic carrying our own bags when we go for shopping so if we do that individually it will uh, play a bigger role thank you so much i think whatever you mentioned is uh, very important that you know we carry our own bags and to make our uh, waste segregate our waste thank you so much apurva it was an in, uh, what do you call very insightful interview and a wonderful interview uh, we would um, we would like to thank you so much for taking your time uh, and uh, and telling us more about how we could you know we could make a change to the environment to end our show today we will play one last song from this year's world environment day campaign called tick tick plastic Thank you all for listening and we hope you have enjoyed the show today. This has been Divya Kiran with Pratibha Ramachandra and with our guest Apoorva. Thank you so much Apoorva. It is time to say goodbye from all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you for uh, thank you everyone for listening and um, truly honored. Thank you.
Thank you. Plastic pollution is a threat to our lives, other living beings and to our mother earth. It's a global threat that impacts every country and community across the world. We must act, commit and set new norms now to eliminate plastic. This World Environment Day, join us in this global effort to beat plastic pollution and to find eco-friendly solutions to plastic pollution. Let's tick tick plastic from our lives. Tick 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 Kasam ye khai re Tick 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 Plastic tick na paai re Tick 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 Kasam ye khai re Tick 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 Plastic tick na paai re Agar sun lo फट जाएगा ये बहती सी है नदिया का ये पानी रुक जाएगा अगर सुन लो जो संभले न हम तो बम ये फट जाएगा कि बहती सी है नदिया का ये पानी रुक जाएगा कि कर दो रहम धरती का ये दम भी घुट जाएगा कि कुदरत की हनस नस में जहर ये बस जाएगा प्लास्टिक के हम सब मोहताज हैं कैसा ये समाज है कल ना हो हाथों में आज है मौका ये अब ना गवाए रे to Rangoli Radio over DAB in the Leeds area and over rangoliradio.com everywhere in the world. Mm-hmm. 